It's May 13th, 1945, and the Demon Corps was poised, waiting to be unleashed onto Japan. A week earlier, Little Boy, who was detonated over Hiroshima, followed by the Fat Man bomb in Nagasaki, claiming over 200,000 lives and leading to the surrender of Japan. In 1946, a P-239 plutonium core scheduled for nuclear detonation was melted down and reintegrated into the United States nuclear stockpile. That was the end of a 14-pound metallic device that had killed two scientists 11 months earlier and many more people after it was recast. This is the very true story of the Demon Core. This seemingly harmless ball looks just like a shiny cannonball. It has a diameter of 3.5 inches and weighed 14 pounds, but if you handled it incorrectly, something really dreadful would happen. The core was carried around in a secure container. It was originally intended to be used in a third nuclear bomb and dropped on Japan on the 19th of August, but it was never used as Japan surrendered. After the war, a physicist working at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico decided to use this remaining core to figure out what it would take to make a core like this go critical. When a core like this is not critical, it's in a state of equilibrium, no increase or decrease in power. But under the right circumstances, it can go super critical, creating and sustaining a chain reaction until it either enters a new level of criticality or increases power even further. Or all of that energy escapes at once in a massive explosion. The physicist wanted to use neutron reflective material around the sphere of plutonium and uranium to see just how close they could get to going critical without tipping over the edge. Legendary physicist Richard Feynman commented on the experiments of this kind, reportedly saying the experiments were like tickling the tail of a sleeping dragon. But the experiments continued. Within just two years, these experiments had already claimed the lives of Harry K. Danglin Jr and Lewis Slaughton. On the 21st of August 1945, Harry Danglin, a 24-year-old physicist from London, was working on the core. He was making a neutron reflector around the core. A neutron reflector is designed to reflect neutrons back into a subcritical mass, making the core critical. While conducting the experiment, Danglian noticed that the addition of a tungsten brick would render the core super critical the dragon would wake up. As he was cautiously placing this last brick, he accidentally dropped it onto the core. The moment this brick hit the core, it instantly went super critical. Danglian reported, there was a flash of blue light and a wave of heat, and he immediately used his hand to knock the dropped brick on the floor. With this, his fate was sealed. In that fraction of a second, he had absorbed the highest acute dose of radiation of any human in history. He had absorbed 510 rem of neutron radiation. He received intensive care, but fell into a coma and passed away 25 days later. This is a photo of his hand, the hand he'd used to knock the brick off and stop the demon core. This photo was taken nine days after the event, and his skin was severely burned, peeling off, and his flesh was grievously burned and swollen. Danglian was not in the experiment room alone. He was in the room with Private Robert Jr. Hemley, who was sitting behind the desk four meters away on guard duty. Hemley died 33 years later from radiation-induced leukemia. Harry K. Danglian Jr. was the first American casualty of the atomic age. He agreed to have his body donated to science after his death so that scientists could study the effect of radiation on the human body. Nine months after the first accident happened, a second incident happened. Louis Slotin was a 35-year-old Canadian physicist who had worked on the Manhattan Project in 1942 and now worked on uranium and plutonium cores to assess their critical mass amounts. He had become quite the showman when doing experiments. So on the 21st of May 1946, at about 3 p.m., he was running an experiment on the Demon Core. He was demonstrating this experiment to his replacement, 35-year-old Allian. 
This time, instead of tungsten bricks, he placed inside two half spheres made of beryllium. And lowering the halves until they were just a small space apart, he showed if the core was completely enclosed, the reflecting neutron would be total and the dragon would awaken. One half of the sphere had a small hole in it to allow an operator to hold onto and lure it. What he was using to separate the two halves, two halves that if met cause a nuclear explosion, was a single flat blade screwdriver, which means during an experiment, one hand would be holding the top half via the hole and the other hand would be holding the screwdriver. This was reckless but he'd done this dozens of times to observers. The experiment was nicknamed Tickling the Tail of the Dragon. This time, at about 3.20 p.m., the screwdriver slipped, causing the top half of the sphere to close over the core. The, the demon core instantly went supercritical, ionizing the air around. There was a flash of blue light and a wave of heat before he flipped the top half of the sphere off. There were seven other scientists in the room, but as soon as the accident occurred, the seven others tried to run out. But Slotin shouted at them. He told them to get back in, and he gave them chalk to mark their precise position at the moment of the incident. Slotin's position over the core had shielded the other occupants of the room, but Slotin died nine days later of severe radiation poisoning at the age of 35. Funnily enough, he died in the same hospital as Danglion on another Tuesday the 21st as a result of the accident from the same demon corps, and they were even cared for by the same nurse. Three other witnesses would also suffer from this. Alwyn developed symptoms of acute radiation sickness. Marion Edward would also die sometime after the accident of radiation-induced leukemia, and so did most of the others. This was the last demonstration with the core before it was used in a test detonation. After these events, the core was melted down for use in other cores. Due to these accidents, no more experiments would be done by hand. Instead, now they use remotely controlled machinery, allowing the operator to be safely away from the radiation. <laughs>